he has been called more Catholic than the Pope. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com and today we're speaking with author and journalist Michael Corrin to find out why Catholics are right. Let's start by having you tell us about the book, Why Catholics Are Right. It's not why Catholics are right and why we should beat everybody else up. My parents weren't Catholic, most of my best friends aren't Catholic. But if I believe something to be right, I believe it to be right. And, you know, people write books why atheists are right, why Muslims are right, no one says a word, but this time could you say that? So the most guaranteed way of finding God and fulfillment for eternity is through the sacraments and liturgy and teaching of the church. That doesn't mean though that other people will not be with God. Neither of your parents were Catholic, so how did you become so fervent in your faith? At high school I, I was interested and then at university and then I was, I was really quite successful very early on. I had two books out by the time I was 24. I'd bought this apartment in the middle of London, well it had a mortgage on it, and it was going so well and I, I thought to myself, is this it? I mean, is, is this really it, what I've been working for? And um, I thought there must be something else. And I began to search, and it took me in the direction of the Catholic Church. What was your overall goal with the book, your aim? I mean, is it to convert people? Good people I've met over the years, huge numbers of good people who go to church, and they read the papers, they turn the TV on, and there's another attack. I mean, it's everywhere, you know, making fun of... I wanted to give them some reason to, to be stronger in their faith. So that's the primary function of the book. But beyond that, if people are converted by it, that's great. Why would you say that anti-Catholicism has become so prevalent in recent years? I believe it, it, it is, uh, just in, in, in popular entertainment, that the way clergy are portrayed and the way Catholics are portrayed, from, from glee to, very, to serious movies, you know. But where it really gets to people is, life begins at conception, ends at natural death, and the only place for a sexual relationship is between a man and a woman in marriage. That enough makes you worse than Hitler. If you look at the studies of those people who have the, the best marriages, the most contentment, um, it tends to be people who are, who are serious Catholics, actually. And uh, the, the, since we had the, the, the condom has been readily available, we were told it would change everything, and the pill has been readily available. Um, you know, to even call it the pill, it, 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 it alters the natural workings of the body. Uh, women putting alien chemicals into their body to liberate them or to make uh, men uh, ha have more time for them. Now, the, the sex abuse scandal, um, if I'm not mistaken, your take on it is that it happens everywhere and that it's not exclusive to the Catholic Church. Any institution where there's a power dynamic between an adult and a young person, tragically, you will have abuse. It's human nature, sadly. So to say it is exclusive or, or particular to the Catholic Church is wrong. But that doesn't mean it didn't happen in the church. It did happen. Men who who abused 12, 13, 14, 15 year old boys always had that perversion and they went into the seminaries knowing they had it and they acted on it and, and it's horrible and they should have been weeded out long ago. They are now. It was individuals in the church, often awful people who did the wrong thing. It's not about the church, it's about human nature. It's another reason why we need the church. On the other side of things, what is your take on atheism? There's no such thing as atheism. You know, Bertram Russell, who was a far greater intellect than any of these people today writing on atheism, he said, you know, I can't call myself an atheist anymore, it's ridiculous. I don't think there's a God, I don't believe in God, but to say there's no God as a, as a materialist, I will have to have seen everything and say, it doesn't exist. Well, I haven't and couldn't, so I can't say there's no God. I can say, I don't think there's a God. So atheism isn't actually logically consistent. But there are all sorts of people, it's fashionable to say, oh, I don't believe in God. Fine, you don't believe in God. He believes in you. Uh, I think there is a lot of intellectual argument for God, but in the end, it has to be a faith position. Hell is not a place where men in red tights, you know, start doing this to you. I mean, unless you really want that sort of thing. Um, it, it's, it's eternity without God. And if you choose eternity without God, how, and then you then complain about that, I don't quite understand. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>